Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda. Now, last time we were together, we got our hero here, Link, decked out with his goodies. And we're now ready to go take on the very first dungeon. Now, Link is a little banged up, so maybe we can do a little healing. Oh, that was great. We lucked out and got a fairy. After, well, what? The third or fourth Octorok? Alright, you know what? I'm gonna put our camera on. Look at that, we took out that Zora with one hit. And our first dungeon is actually really, really close. Where we start the game. Look at that. I'm doing good today. It is a good sign. And here we go, here's our first dungeon. It's down underneath this tree. Alright. Now, our dungeons are thankfully number coded. This is the first dungeon. You don't have to do them in order, but I would suggest doing them in order because you collect treasure and items in each dungeon. It helps you out. In fact, in some cases, they're required. Now, this is actually a pretty short dungeon. It's a good way to you know, start things up and get going. You gotta explore around and find keys to open these locked doors. Like that door right there. And there are usually different enemies in the dungeons than there are in the overworld. But here we have the skeletons called Staples. And that's how you say it's Staples. And then the other room we had bats, which I think are called Crease. Crease? Creasy? Something like that. Now, I'm, I'm going to most of the time defeat every enemy I come across in each one of these rooms. Because sometimes, after you defeat them all, you bring an item. In some cases, you have to move these blocks to activate a trigger or something, and you can only move the blocks after you defeat all the enemies. There's not a lot of that in this stage. Right now, that door just closed right behind us. That's going to be a fairly common trap in these dungeons. And the solution is usually to kill all the enemies. Alright. And there's one of our first dungeon succeeding pictures. That's the compass. The compass will indicate where the Triforce piece is. If you look up there in the top left where it says number 1, that flashing red dot is where the Triforce is. But the solid white dot is the room we're in. Now, if we hit Start, we can actually take a look at the map as it starts to fill out. And the map will eventually take a shape. I think most maps are shaped after like animals and stuff. Like birds and snakes and dragons and lions and that sort of thing. When we actually find the map, that map will be filled out for us, and we'll have a little mini-map over there in the top left. See, there we go, we push that, and the far door opens. Okay. This most peninsula is the secret. Several times we'll come across the wise old men in the dungeons that will give us hints. Sometimes the hints are to the dungeon we're in, sometimes they're for future dungeons. In this case, he's talking about that one screen we were on that had the gambling room, and I walked through the wall and found one of the uh, moblins that gave us money. Kiss looking things, was slime monsters. 
get that coal. There we go. This is our map. And it kind of vaguely resembles the shape of a bird. And you can see down there on the bottom left is the full map. And there in the middle is what we have and have not explored. We want to go to the right to get the Triforce piece. We're going to keep exploring. There's more stuff we can find. Here's some more enemies. These little boomerang chucking monsters are for burritos, I think. We're going to see more and more of them as we play the game. Huh? And those are some. I forget uh, what the names of these things are, but they're little spiked things that kind of try to hit us. And if you remember me playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night, those were a problem for me. Alright, and here's our first treasure. We found the bow. And with the bow, we fire our arrows. Now we do have a limit for the arrows, and that limit is how many rupees we have. So we can fire this thing 79 more times. Actually, a pretty useful item. I have not taken advantage of it nearly enough. Well, we are going to take advantage of it when we fight the dungeon's boss. Yes, each dungeon has its own boss. Sometimes they're. Uh, what are those? Sometimes they're bosses from other dungeons, so we'll see them get copied. But sometimes they're unique just to that dungeon. And here's our next item. We now have the boomerang. The boomerang is a weapon you can throw around, and it can stun and destroy some enemies. Right. You hear that Godzilla roaring? That means we're about to close. The new enemies we're fighting here, these are war monsters. They're giant hands that grab you. And if they grab you, they drag you back to the beginning of the dungeon. And here's our first boss. I'm trying to remember his name. It's a dragon here. We've got to try to put him in the fight. Now, since we have the magic shield, we can block his projectiles. The sword isn't the only thing we can We can also hit bombs. It's dead. And for defeating it, we get another piece of wood. And there is our Triforce piece. Now, the second I grab this Triforce piece, we're going to automatically exit the dungeon. And I think what I'm going to do is, like the other Zelda games I've played, we're going to end the video with each dungeon. So I'm going to say goodbye to you guys now, and I'm going to see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.